I thought I would do a short update of the inflatable vehicle project. Uh, last time I spoke about it, I was uh, out in the backyard going circles around a pole with one of the wheels. Uh, now I have moved along and I have uh, completed the build of uh, four uh, wheels and I have uh, started um, uh, constructing the chassis and the axles and um, a lot of other accessories uh, and I thought we could start with uh, checking out the uh, the front axle of the uh, inflatable car and here you can see it in its entire length uh, the motors are of course positioned farthest out and uh, since the test in the garden where with ease could uh, bend this uh, 12 millimeter threaded uh, rod I have uh, updated the uh, the clamping of the motors with a uh, extra screw from both sides that gives me an even more positive uh, grip uh, on the uh, axle the, the, the screws are actually actually go into the aluminum tube and I will have to do the same with the second uh, motor uh, mount because the torque forces are tremendous in these serious wound electric motors. The mag magnetic field inside them are, is like a hammer. It's super, super strong. Uh, and um, also from the, um, from the utility vehicle project uh, that I uh, did in between, uh, I al also um, uh, got aware of that thread lock was not enough to keep the, uh, the sprockets in place. So now I have uh, I have welded the, uh, the sprockets to the shaft as well and kind of uh, grind off the excess welding so that it doesn't interfere with the chain. And if we move up here to the, um, to the large gear which is uh, bolted onto the uh, torque transfer plate on the outside of the wheel, uh, I can also see the problem of uh, these bolts transferring the torque to the to the plywood uh, because it's such a um, the motor is geared down significantly and you have yet a reduction here so the torque uh, on these bolts will be tremendous and I think that that just might rip up the the wood here so I have to make some sort of extension to this or reinforcement to it uh, perhaps some uh, aluminum plate or just a thicker plywood so that would be a thing that I also will add to the structure with the knowledge gained from the utility vehicle and uh, speaking of the utility vehicle, I had the same type of uh, uh, arrangement on the, those motors. The, uh, those were um, just ordinary power drills corded. Uh, and I um, used uh, a high voltage relay to switch the uh, current flow between the brushes and the stators in here to, to make it possible to uh, change the direction of the motor electrically and remotely. And it turned out that the, these uh, relays are uh, kind of wimpy for that. Um, although the intention is not to switch from forward to reverse uh, while you're still driving forward. But the thing is, even if you're just coasting, rolling with it, and you have uh, turned off th the throttle, uh, there will still be some uh, magnetic field lingering in the uh, stator. So uh, you might have a slight short out, even if you uh, switch to reverse when the throttle is set to zero. And I'll show you a short clip showing uh, me uh, letting go of the throttle but switching to reverse on the right side motors on the utility vehicle. And you can see that it uh, quite significantly um, breaks uh, the right side of the wheels on the structure. Check this out. And since then I have changed these small relays against the uh, more uh, rigid ones. Uh, so I think that they might uh, hold up. But I will have to do some, some driving, more driving with the utility vehicle and just uh, misbehaving with it to see uh, if the relays mounted in the utility at this, at this time can stand some uh, accidental activation and, uh, and the, uh, the magnetic fields uh, lingering in the motors. Uh, this little wimpy wire here is just for uh, the ground wire to the relay for switching. It's a uh, 12 volt. So it's uh, not supposed to be any, any high voltage in the structure itself. And uh, over here we have 
of course, the wheel, the tarpaul, and uh, a significantly sized uh, zipper here, uh, so that I can uh, uh, cover in the motor and uh, bolt the uh, the torque plate there uh, onto the drive sprocket here. Uh, and here I am in a kind of classic uh, di dilemma for a experimental build. I don't really know how much. Uh, time and effort I should put in to protect this plywood from, from uh, the uh, outdoor conditions. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, worth it to, to just have uh, penetrating oil or should I also apply a first layer of, uh, uh, what do you call it, a primer uh, or even perhaps uh, cover it with paint to make it even more weather resistant. The thing is I don't know if this will last for seconds or <laughs> minutes or hours or or days or months or years or whatever, so it's always uh, hard to know where to, uh, where to stop. And this aim, of course, also applies to this smaller piece of uh, uncoated plywood here with the uh, seal and the bearing. Okay, so we can move along here, and here I have uh, 3D printed uh, parts that fit into the uh, other part of the chassis, and they are, of course, reinforced with uh, glass fiber to be able to withstand the, uh, the torque forces. And this is my pretty much my main worry. I don't know if I have uh, uh, applied enough glass fiber uh, onto these connections here. And this is what I love about this project. <laughs> here we have high power, and then we have, well, slightly compressed air, air as well. I had the good fortune to, uh, this is just ordinary half inch garden hose uh, connectors. I had the good fortune to find a split connector which was uh, threaded so I could uh, actually unthread these. I had to heat, heat them up because they were thread locked and then I could uh, thread a new thread in the uh, aluminum tube and screw this in. So that was simple. Uh, two of them, one for each wheel. They are of course going to connect to the traditional Gardena hose fitting and uh, there will be a half inch uh, hose coming out here and going into the uh, to the vacuum cleaners. I will show you that later on. And here's the unfinished side of the uh, axle. So that's uh, as far as I have come with uh, with these parts. Now let's take a look at the uh, the main body, the chassis of the vehicle. Here you can see the uh, remaining three uh, drivetrain motors. Uh, and I have um, welded the, these sprockets onto the shaft uh, as well and uh, tested the, uh, the uh, chain that it still rolls nice uh, off and on the um, tooth of the sprockets. And here is the, uh, the main chassis. It's uh, open. Uh, I have the covering plate and the other covering plate here. And here you can see the, uh, <laughs> the lovely half inch <laughs> standard uh, water hose that are supposed to connect to, uh, to the uh, axles, uh, filling, the, uh, filling the wheels with air. And I use, uh, yeah, here's the other one, so two forward and two on the, on the other side, of course. And uh, the main power to the wheels are coming through these kind of uh, stock connectors. Um, and, uh, well, the same thing with the unprotected wood here. I had not uh, applied any any uh, surface layer yet. And here is the kind of sketchy uh, electronics. Uh, the thing is, the uh, the vacuum cleaners will suck air through holes here, and uh, so I force the air to pass through the uh, cooling fins here, and it's the same. It's symmetric, so it's uh, one in each quadrant of the motor or, or the vehicle. Uh, and here, on the, uh, the, the aft of the vehicle, I have an extra uh, transistor that controls power to the uh, two vacuum cleaners. Slightly modified, slightly hacked, to uh, do the job of uh, inflating the wheels. This is the outside, so it looks a little bit prettier. And you can see uh, this is a 3D printed part here that spits uh, the, uh, the outgoing air to the uh, to the four hoses. So these are controlled in parallel. Um, and that's the back end there. 
So I have come a pretty long way, but it's uh, still a lot to do. Uh, later on, I, I intend to make a a more intelligent fitting here, so that I both can uh, use the motors to inflate the vehicles, but also a sort of a valve, so that I can switch back and use the the suction of the motors to suck out the air from the wheels, because it takes a long time to uh, to deflate these wheels. Uh, the zipper will be permanently uh, taped from the inside later on, so you cannot just open the zipper and letting the air out. And um, I think I have a good chance of actually making the system pretty airtight, so I really need a good way of uh, uh, sucking out the air from the, uh, from the tires later on. Uh, the reason for me to use uh, quick connectors uh, on the both uh, with the uh, compressed air and uh, of course with the uh, the power to the uh, to the electric motors uh, is of course because I do want to be able to uh, uh, disassemble the vehicle for transportation. And another thing that you might wonder about is uh, why I'm using um, two uh, vacuum cleaners to uh, inflate the uh, car, and it's. Uh, it's both a matter of I want to be able to inflate it pretty fast because you know it's boring to wait a long time, but it's also a, a matter of safety uh, since I do I do intend to use the uh, this uh, vehicle uh, driving over water, and uh, I'm not I'm not completely certain uh, of how airtight I will be able to make the wheels, so I don't know how how long it will take before it sinks if um, something fails with the uh, vacuum cleaners that uh, keeps the uh, structure inflated. Uh, so redundancy and uh, I'm kind of uh, don't have the uh, patience to wait. Yeah and speaking of impatience uh, I think this concludes this update. Uh, I will see you soon.